Saigon has been so great, we're moving into a new apartment. from Vietnam. I'm in Saigon and you heard me right. I'm going to try out what living in Saigon is like. Our first apartment that we were staying in is now fully booked. Couldn't extend it. So we're moving into a new apartment. Same Airbnb owner. She owns 13 apartments in this complex, which is amazing. Fantastic. I love to see women opening up businesses, doing really well. And that's because her Airbnbs are so nice. Amazing beds, which is unheard of in Vietnam. These ones are comfy. Just really comfortable place. She really thinks of everything. And this apartment building is amazing. I love the people. It was really the reason I decided to stay here in District 1 instead of moving to one of the less touristy districts. Because even though it's 10 floors and there are several, well, 13 plus Airbnbs, it's still very much a local spot. So I want to share that with you. It's like this apartment complex of entrepreneurs running businesses on different levels. I'll share that with you later. But first, I want to take a walk in the park. I come here every morning. It's just 10 minutes from my Airbnb, and it's really a local spot. There are people here meditating. There are locals I see every day, like this woman who walks backwards. We now recognize each other, and there's this group of women exercising. They have a class every morning. I have not yet had the courage to ask them if I could join. I need to bring my phone so I can Google Translate. Hey, do you mind if I also do that with you? Anyway, I'll share that with you in the video, but first, I need to go for a walk. Now, one of the things that I do miss when I travel is actually having some kind of routine. I mean, you would think that people travel to get out of a routine, but actually for me, I do miss a routine, and so being able to walk in the morning, having somewhere to walk is fantastic. Saigon has lots of these green spaces, these parks. It seems like they really prioritize it. And that's really because life is out on the street. And so life begins here at 6 a.m. I would say probably even earlier, but I'm not getting up earlier. I usually wake up with the sun. It's around 5.30, I'm out on the street at 6. That's about the same time I see a lot of other people out on the street. I think for two reasons. One, it's really hot right now, so you gotta get out early in order to beat the heat. And two, a lot of Vietnamese homes and apartments are small, at least in the city. And so people wake up, they get out. They go, they have coffee on the street. They go have breakfast on the street. So you see a lot of people living on the street. And those people that have living rooms, actually the bottom floor of their place will usually have like a garage door that opens up. So you're looking into basically their living room. But I love having this style of life, having so much energy on the street. Alan asked me, what's it like in my hometown in Canada in the summer? Are people out doing things? I'm like, no, it's too hot. We go to cottages or to pools or to the lake or to the ocean. We don't actually stay where we are. And so even though it's so hot right now, we're kind of experiencing that. But I am sweating and it's not from walking. It's because it's starting to get hotter. So I'm going to go back to the apartment and I want to share with you just what it's like because the people there have been so amazing, so welcoming, and I just want to give you an idea of what it's like to be in a real apartment building in Vietnam because it's not what you would expect. Want all my tips, including what didn't make it into videos? Check out my Vietnam guide for what to see, eat, and do, plus crucial tips for renting a motorbike in Vietnam. All right, so I have been here long enough that I have learned to cross the street confidently. I can cross the street. One of the things I realized about crossing the street in Vietnam, which everyone says is terrifying, well, there are a couple of things. One, you cross the street when there's an opening. You just have to do it, even if it says, don't walk, don't be a Canadian, just walk. And then the second thing is, if you're on a street where there's no opening, you just have to walk into it. The thing is, nobody is going to hit you. They'll move around you. You just walk slowly and also you always move forward, never back. That is the rule. So I've learned the local way to walk, to just get out there and figure it out. Because even though there are lights, the truth is they don't pay attention to them either. So they go through lights all the time, they go through stop signs all the time. 
do not think just because it says go for you on a crosswalk that you can actually go. You, you have to be aware at all times. Defensive driving, defensive walking. And then we're coming up to a spot. I was actually here last night, so I'll show you some footage from here. You can get a coffee or a tea, sit here for hours. This place is popular all day long. The thing I've realized about Vietnam, water is cheap. Don't worry about getting fresh ice in your drinks. Everyone has their ice delivered. It is purified. Um, there's lots of water places. The tra da, or the traditional tea that they give you often for free. It's also purified. Nobody's gonna give a tourist water if the tourist can't drink it. Um, but also, beer is cheaper than coffee. So Vietnam is the second largest producer of coffee in the world, second to Brazil. And it's high quality, but it's also not cheap. At least here in Saigon. So beer is about, it starts at less than 50 cents. But coffee, <laughs> if you get it on the street, you might be able to get it for that price. If you want to go to a coffee shop, there's so many fantastic coffee shops here. You're going to look at $2, $3, $5. Now I want to show you my apartment building and we're going to enter through here. Waiting for the elevator. Now this is a busy building, 10 floors. I don't know. There may be 30 to 50 apartments on each floor, so it's very busy. You know, I have been really so surprised at how nice people have been. Not only are we supporting the Airbnb host, but a lot of people have businesses actually in here. So as you walk in, you can see you can rent a motorbike here. There are a number of different shops. There's an antique shop, you can buy drinks, there's a fruit shop, a number of different salons. One of the salons I went to, I got a shampoo blow dry style for four dollars. If you don't want a blow dry style, I think it's only 250 got my hair colored there um, on the fifth floor Alan has gone for a massage same apartment also has laundry service so we've had our laundry done there a number of times um, on the second floor and on the fourth floor you can get breakfast and lunch there's a woman who makes iced coffee we basically if we need anything done we just message our Airbnb host and say who does this in what apartment? How can we support someone else here? And so for that reason, we've gotten to know a lot of people here. There's been a language barrier, but you know, the kindness that they show us despite that, just using Google Translate has been fantastic. And during rainy season, you really need to know, where should I eat if it's raining? Because you don't want to go outside. It looks like there's quite a bit of pork in there. Thank you. It's not done yet. I know. It's still there. Yeah. yeah. I hope you get the... I'll give you my I spoon. I think for me, maybe for you, that solidified like we should stay in Saigon longer is the spot. This is our favorite spot. It's called Gok, it's a coffee shop. There are so many great coffee shops in Saigon, but this one is just right around the corner from our Airbnb. And what makes it so great is it's on a corner and it just has these benches outside. And so you can just sit, drink your coffee and like just watch everyone. And it just definitely feels like a slice of life. Everyone here is local. Gok, I believe, is a franchise or a, at least it has a number of different locations in Saigon, but every location is different. And so, of all of them, this is by far the best. And I think maybe there are only a couple of them, they're not a lot. But, also, it has my favorite coffee. So, coconut coffee. If you've never had Vietnamese coconut coffee, it is amazing. There are two different kinds. One uses like coconut cream, coconut milk, milk, coffee and it's more like a smoothie or this one is just simply coconut milk in your coffee and once you have coconut milk in your coffee you cannot go back it is so good and so as I said coffee is expensive this is 49 each but we spend our 98,000 dong and we enjoy the afternoon and that's what we're gonna do we're just gonna spend a couple hours here maybe an hour 
In Vietnam, you can go to a coffee shop. The coffee is expensive, but you can sit there for six hours. We've done it. But you just sit until you're ready to go. Even before or after your coffee is done, you can just sit as long as you want. Now, I know I went a little bit crazy and showed you this rice porridge with squid and like blood jello, but I wanted to show you somewhere really nice for lunch. Not only is it really high quality food, but also is run by the nicest couple. They're so, so nice. We've been here, I don't know, like five or six times. It got to the point where I thought, I can't eat there anymore. We just, we've eaten there so many times, but I'm eating here again just for this video. This spot is Kam Ga, which means chicken rice. And that's exactly what it is. It has a lot of chicken dishes. It also does have pork and then other dishes. Um, they do have that porridge with different dishes, but every time we come here, we've been getting this. So it's chicken rice. They also give you some salad. They give you some cucumber. They give you some pickle. They also give you the cha da for free. They also give you the napkins for free. The first day that we came here, Alan asked for some peanuts. Since then, every time we sit down, they give him the peanuts all free. Just the nicest, sweetest couple. Really, really just nice to go somewhere where you know the food is good, the people are good. It's like a win-win. The reason I know it's so good is because they make their own hot sauce. So around the world, I just feel like the true test of a great place is they make all the food from scratch, but if they give you bottled hot sauce, it's like you're kind of spoiling it. The truly good places, they give you the stuff that they make themselves because they know start to finish that they know the quality is high. All right, so it turns out this drink is actually seaweed. It's these jelly things are seaweed and it's mixed with ginger and sugar to make this drink slash dessert. And actually, it's a specialty of where they're from. So cool. Quang Nam. So now I really want to go there and try more of this. I'm going to end this video here simply because we're just going to enjoy lunch and then maybe have a cold tea somewhere. But I think it's obvious why it's so easy to stay in Saigon longer. It's just a really nice neighborhood, a very green city, lots of delicious food. I can't wait to show you more of it. In my next video, we're going on a day trip to somewhere I said we weren't going to show you. <laughs> so I'll see you then. Join my Patreon community for more behind the scenes and exclusive content you won't find elsewhere. You can also find me on Instagram and be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. All of these things make my day. Thank you so much for your support.